Hello guys, so I'm back again for another sort of late night ramble with you guys, and today I wanted to talk about prayer. Now, prayer is something that I didn't, like, I've been a Christian not very long, I guess, maybe, I don't know, not, it's not a short amount of time, but it hasn't been really a long amount of time. So something like, let's see, 12 years or something, and... Prayer is something that's always eluded me, mainly because I don't really like to talk to anyone. I'm not a big talker. It's not really that I don't like to talk. I'm just not a big talker. I'm an introvert, so I like to sort of just let you do the talking and sort of figure out who you are from that and things like that. So for me, the prayer thing has always been kind of on the back burner I would pray occasionally and then I would stop and then you know it wouldn't be like what the Bible says where it's supposed to be all the time it would never be that and last year and this year God's really been working with me on that like he's really given me a heart to pray he's really called me and been like hey come talk to me and things like that so it's been a really big change for me and it's been really good like it's been pretty amazing actually so, I want to just go through some verses and then talk about them a little bit. First Thessalonians 5.17, that's the pray without ceasing verse that everybody always talks about and everybody is always like, you know, that means pray all the time. Yeah, and it does. And it's probably one of the, it's not the shortest Bible verse because the shortest Bible verse is Jesus wept. But... <laughs> it's pretty short and it's part of a list of things you're supposed to do as a Christian so practical Christianity is what I call this and practically you're just supposed to pray anything comes up pray about it you're happy about something pray about it you can't figure something out pray about it that's really like our go-to thing right first uh, Corinthians 14 15 talks about speaking in tongues and how we should not only pray with our spirit but with our minds also so that there's no confusion uh, when we praise, we're clear about it, and when we are given direction, we're clear about it, right? And I thought that was interesting because a lot of times what speaking in tongues is used for now is just sort of people falling on the floor and blah, 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 talking and whatever. And God's pretty clear it's supposed to be an organized thing. It's not unorganized. It's not this crazy mess that people are doing now. So I don't know what happened there, but it, that's not biblical. So I'm not saying speaking in tongues isn't biblical because it is. It's just the way churches are doing it now is wrong. So uh, I, when churches do that, it really cheeses me off because, you know, we have instructions, we know what to do, and still we don't do it. And it becomes an institutionalized thing. So, and that kind of drives me crazy. <laughs> But in a way, like speaking in tongues is a form of prayer. And what I like, I really like where it talks about, it says not only pray with our spirit, but with our minds as well. This is not like an, I just had a spiritual thing and that's all it was. It was all emotion. It's not that. It's a mental thing too, where we're thinking with our minds and we apply it and we have to be sort of rational about things as well. So... I don't know. I've, I've never really gotten this whole, there's an emotional component to Christianity, but there's also a, hey, use your brain, don't be stupid, stupid part, and that seems to just fly out the window, and I don't know where it went, but it's gone. So, <laughs> I don't know, in a lot of churches, it seems to be gone, so. Uh, Matthew 6.6 6 talks about how to pray and what to bend our minds towards when we pray, so. That one was pretty easy. You can look that one up. Luke 11, 2 is the Lord's Prayer. And this is instructions from Jesus on how to pray. And the Lord's Prayer, you know, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into the snare of the evil one or temptation, but forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and if you ever have gone through i've been through one bible study where that's what we looked at we sort of dissected the lord's prayer and 
everyone I think should do that because when you look at that, that is all the commandments sort of rolled up into one prayer. You can pray that and that's just how you can pray and then move on from there and just roll right through another prayer. So that's awesome. That's directly from, you know, God. That's a, that's the format. James 5, 13 through 15, prayer is used for healing. And I know there's a major controversy over this. So let me just tell you straight off the bat where I stand with this. I believe we should pray over each other when we are sick. When something happens to us, we have cancers, we have things like that. Excuse me, broken leg, anything. But I also think we should take these physical precautions. If there's a medicine for what's wrong with us, we should take it. I believe, though, also in laying on of hands and praying and also in like these uh, it says in this verse in James 13 through 15 that we're supposed to pray and anoint with oil anoint the sick person with oil with when that's what our leaders are supposed to do sorry <laughs> I lost my train of thought and so I take this to mean do your part as well take your medicine don't be just laying in the road praying, oh God, help me. You know, he gave us science, he gave us technology, he gave us all these things and our abilities with it to help us. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I just, I think that that, those couple verses show us to not only pray, but also do the physical part, also do the common sense part. So my next one is Mark 9, 29. Prayer drives out a demon in this situation. And this is something else that churches don't seem to talk about too much. And I don't know why, because it's in the Bible, especially the New Testament, with Jesus all the time. So in this situation, this demon can only be driven out through prayer. I know there's another one where it talks about where a demon can only be driven out with prayer and fasting. So there's a sort of prep there. But otherwise, usually you can just go get out and they're gone. Um, this this uh, reality that demons are real and they're wandering around doing stuff to us and everything. Uh, I think that that's what ghosts are. I don't think people come back from the dead in spirit form to haunt us. I think that's demons. So that's just where I'm going with that. Um, prayer is often paired with something, but it is, from what I understand, the purest connection to the divine that we have. Through prayer we go and we stand boldly before God with our petition and fears and thanks and everything else that's in our little wee heart. And he listens and he talks to us and he deals with us from there. So I know that now that I've been trying to take a day, the day and time alone with him it, that and pray, that's really changed me for the better. I'm not as worried. I'm focused now. Um, more focused, I should say. I know better the direction that God wants me to take it for my life. And I can hear the voice of God better. Like, I can tell the difference between God better now and just, like, something I thought. Because <laughs> that does happen, too. So what about you guys? What kind of prayer experiences have you had? Let me know down in the comments or, you know, on Twitter. You can at me at Politocrist. And until tomorrow, guys, remember to read your Bible and pray, and be blessed.